What is going on my beautiful LARPers and LARPettes? Today we're going to go over what in the hellion is this? <laughs> Sorry for the dad jokes, but this gun has been around for many, many years. Um, you may have been seeing it recently because Springfield has imported them from Croatia to the US. Um, they were they're still known in Croatia as the VHS, but out here in the US, we call them the Hellion. And I just want to point out the features uh, really quick on this gun and what I like about it and what I don't like about it. But before I get into all that, what is my relationship with Springfield Armory? They do not send me guns and pay me for the reviews or anything. They just send me the gun for free and say, hey, can you just uh, show this off to your audience basically and tell them if you like it or not. And that's what I'm exactly gonna do for you here today. I'm not gonna sugarcoat this gun and say this is the best gun ever. I'm gonna give you my honest opinion about it and what I like and what I dislike. But let's get right into it guys. Right here at the front, you get a four prong flash hider with a cold hammer forge 16 inch one in seven twist barrel. Now, while shooting this guy, I did not, I don't know what it is with me guys. Maybe I'm just too lazy to do the actual accuracy testing portion of these videos, but I usually just go out and stick out a steel as far as I wanna walk and basically just say, all right, I'm hitting this steel. It's uh, somewhat good to go until I actually wanna get it proven where I'm getting uh, some good, nice groups. But uh, while filming these intros and all this stuff and trying to shoot as many rounds as I can, it takes a while to do um, certain testing for firearms. And I'm usually doing like three videos, three actual YouTube intros, videos, and all that stuff within one day of filming. And uh, it's just a pain in the ass for me to squeeze stuff in. But the more and more that you guys will ask me for that actual legitimate accuracy testing, the more and more I will 100% make uh, more effort for you guys and do that accuracy testing on paper and get you some actual data. But for now, go ahead and enjoy me shooting at 180 or like almost 200 yards at a BC zone steel. <laughs> Now moving up on the barrel, you do have a short stroke gas piston with two adjustment settings. You have a normal and a suppressed. You go ahead and push that in and twist it and you are in suppressed. You go and push and twist it back and you are in the normal mode. I didn't shoot the suppressed. Usually when it comes to my initial testing, I like to just shoot it bone stock out of the box and then start adding stuff onto it and see if that'll cause any malfunction. Moving back, you do have a polymer type handguard that has M-lock basically all the way around. You do have QD attachment points on the left and right side. And it has quite a few QD attachments to be honest. It has two back here and it has two back here. I don't know why they put so many, but I mean options, right? Moving on up, you do have some really, really nice iron sights that have this little press button on the front and the rear here. And I do like the way they are integrated into the rail of the Hellion. They are super sleek and super nice. When you push those buttons, they lock in and aren't moving anywhere. The top 1913 rail is metal. The rest of the gun is essentially plastic, except the internals, but the whole body of the gun is plastic. The top rail is aluminum. So that's really, really nice. If I were to attach a laser or something like that and I want more stability or better zero, I would keep it on the aluminum rail and not add anything on the sides because this is plastic. I don't know if that'll flex or shift on you. Now moving on down, you do have this little dingle dangle G36 style charging handle that is ambidextrous. Obviously you can move it to this side and charge it or move it to the other side and charge it. I really, really like that setup. It's just something about having a G36 style charging handle that just makes you feel some type of way. And also I forgot to mention right here on the handguard, it is recessed down and rounded off. And that is really nice when you're getting a good C clamp right onto that handguard. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move back here and then work my way down. But right here at the back, you do have an adjustable spring-loaded stock that I don't believe that I've ever seen on a bullpup before. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I didn't really know if uh, spring-loaded, not spring-loaded specific, but adjustable 
stocks exist on a bullpup because the ones that I own don't have adjustable stocks. And on down, here's one of the things that I don't really like about this bullpup here. It is the way you reload it, and specifically, it's the way that I would have to hit that uh, bolt release there. So the reloading process is basically you take out the magazine, which you have this little push uh, button thing back here to release the magazine. You insert the new magazine, and you go ahead and have to do this whole little nipple pinch thing back here. I don't really do the whole nipple pinch thing. It's just, uh, in my head, it's more steps to think about just to squeeze rather than just do this whole swiping motion that I was doing out there. So I put the magazine in and I do this whole claw finger action here and I go ahead and swipe. So magazine in, swipe, and I'm good to go. That to me is a little bit faster than trying to make sure I get the perfect uh, titty twister there. So yeah, that's gonna be the biggest downside for me on this bullpup is just the way you reload it. Obviously, if you train with this gun more and more, you're gonna get faster and faster. I just don't think it's as intuitive as other bullpups out there. And moving on up to the ejection port, it is ambidextrous. You can swap it from the left or the right side. And one thing to point out with the ejection port is, well, two things. Let me point out two things here. While I was shooting underneath my vehicle, the brass that was coming out of the firearm and hitting the ground was bouncing right into my face. That's something that you're basically gonna run into essentially on every bullpup because the whole uh, ejection port on every bullpup is gonna be in the back. That's the reason why they call it a bullpup, right? So whenever you're gonna shoot gun facing to the ground as low as you can, it's gonna spit those rounds out and start bouncing all over the place. So that's just something that I'm pointing out essentially across the board on all bullpups, except like this PS90 here, you're gonna have the ejection straight down. So if you're shooting underneath something, it's gonna shoot this way. So you won't really have that annoyance of the brass smacking you in the face. And on topic of brass smacking you in the face, this isn't as bad as other bullpups out there when it comes to brass smacking you in the face. So if you're a left-handed shooter shooting this in the right-handed configuration, that brass will eject and kind of like fly past you at certain points or smack you a little bit. Not a huge problem because if you do buy this for yourself and you are left-handed, all you gotta do is swap that ejection port to the other side. That's the reason why they give you two options for that ejection port. And just to point out on the Tavor, on the Tavor, the ejection port sits very far back. So if you're gonna shoot this left-handed on the Tavor, you're going to uh, basically be eating brass for your next meal. So again, guys, depending if you're left or right-handed, just go ahead and switch that ejection port around. And just be mindful if you do own this gun or a bullpup style gun other than the PS90. Take into consideration that if you're going to hand this off to a left-handed shooter, like say, hey, the ejection port's right there. Maybe hold it a little bit different or just be mindful that you might be uh, eating brass. And next thing is the grip. The grip, for some reason, I don't know if it's this specific angle. If you can see it right here, it's kind of like straight at the trigger guard and then it kind of comes at a downward angle here. I don't know for some people if that's better, but for me it's definitely not a comfortable feeling long term. And the reason why I say that is while shooting this thing, I was shooting, I think the day that we shot this was around 500 rounds total within that whole day. In the middle of that 500 rounds, maybe 250, 300-ish rounds, I did uh, start to blister up on the inside of my palm here. Now, uh, you might be saying like, dude, don't be a bitch. Just, it's blistering, who gives a shit? And it doesn't matter, really, it doesn't. Because when I shoot my handguns, I do get blisters if I shoot them for a long period of time. I just get them in different areas. I get them in this portion of my uh, knuckle here on my webbing of my hand. And I get them like on this knuckle right here. As you can see, that's a little bit more raised than this knuckle on this side. And right here, you can see that my I don't know if you can see that, but you can see that it's a lot worse looking on my right hand than my left hand. And that's because I've built calluses over time and it doesn't really blister anymore there. But I never had something that blistered in this area here. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and call this the Croatian callus, <laughs> just because I feel like the more and more I use this, the more and more I'm gonna blister up in this certain point, and I'm essentially just gonna get a callus there and it's not gonna really matter anymore. And I think that has to do with the way I grip the gun so high. So when I grab this grip, I'm not at this portion here that I normally would grab like on an AR-15, right? I'm not here. I'm basically at the highest point of this grip here. I am cranked down at a certain angle that it was like squeezing the, the meat in my hand at a at a awkward angle for some reason. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap that stock grip out and see if it fixes those issues. I only have around 1500 rounds to it. When I first got this gun and I wasn't doing YouTube, I shot like around a thousand rounds off and on. It wasn't a whole day thing. I shot like 200 rounds here, 300 rounds there, 100 rounds here. Like I would just take it out and shoot that. But when I wanted to actually take this out and do some initial testing, I only shot a hundred rounds through this thing and it worked flawlessly. It was great. No malfunctions whatsoever, and it was an absolute pleasure to shoot. And the recoil impulse was really nice. Also, while shooting those 500 rounds consecutively, I got this thing pretty damn hot. This was hot in this area here, which normally on an AR-15, this whole portion gets like baking hot, but the heat was all centralized in this area here. So if you were to like stick your hand up higher, you'd kind of feel that heat up against your uh, palm there. But it wasn't unbearably hot to where it was gonna burn me just because you got all this plastic on there. I really, really liked shooting this gun. It was extremely fun. I really like the design of how it looks. The looks of it is really futuristic and cool looking. I like that whole G36 style charging handle and that top rail that kind of gives it that G36 style look. I love the way it shot, but didn't like the split times. And obviously on every single bullpup, the triggers aren't the best. I mean, that goes across the board on all bullpups. The triggers are complete trash. Does somebody make an upgrade for this? You let me know because I would love to upgrade this trigger here. I love that it's such a small package. Again, for bull pups, you're trying to get as small of a package as possible with the full 16 inch barrel, and this is a extremely small package. And overall, I think it is a very nice firearm to have, but is it something that I would replace uh, my AR-15 with? Probably not, just because uh, the biggest thing this thing has going for itself is the short package that it comes in for having a 16 inch barrel. But the quirks of it, I just wouldn't prefer over my AR-15. I'm just so used to using my AR-15 that it's just, it's second nature now. But just like all of my other videos, guys, this is just my opinion. This is just stuff that I'm pointing out. Every hand is made differently. Every face is made differently. The things that were uh, bothering me might not be your specific case. And when it comes to the things that I dislike about it, it doesn't really matter if you don't train. If you don't train, you're not gonna learn how to use this specific system here. Even if you do have an AR-15, you're not gonna know how to use that AR-15 if you don't train with it. I guarantee you that somebody that's been training on this specific firearm here for years compared to somebody that just picks up an AR-15, regardless of how easy the AR-15 is, they're gonna completely wreck them with this firearm here just because they know how to handle this firearm they know how to run it right they know how to load it at that point it would be second nature for them to use before i sign off i just want to go ahead and throw this out there for you guys really quick and this has nothing to do with this gun here our rights are constantly under attack with this whole situation with the whole atf unconstitutional pistol brace ruling and the newly passed assault weapons ban in um, Washington, an assault weapons ban almost getting passed in Colorado, we are slowly, or we have been slowly getting our rights stripped away every year that passes. And it's up to us to reach out to our representatives and make our voices heard and let them know that this is completely unconstitutional. They are turning millions of honest, hardworking, legal gun owners into felons overnight. Basically, I just wanna let you guys know that this is serious and has been serious for many years and more people need to speak out. And unfortunately, not a lot of people in this uh, firearms industry 
they have the balls to say something about it. I'm not a super famous gun tuber or anything like that, but I feel with whatever platform I am using, I need to say something about it regardless of how I say it. Sometimes on my Instagram, I say it in a more comedic way, but that's the best way that I know how to get engagement on my videos on Instagram, just because when I post something like say, hey, this build is coming out, you guys need to say something about it, I'd get not a lot of views compared to me doing something funny and I'd get a lot more views with that. So might as well make a funny video and get serious in the caption and say, hey, like this is serious stuff. But not to be a downer on this video, guys, I just wanted to point that out. I wish a lot more people in this industry would speak out uh, against this type of stuff. It is uh, something that we all need to band together and try to fight together. For those of you that are out there that wanna get more educated on these certain unconstitutional laws, go ahead and look up Gun Owners of America, Firearms Policy Coalition, or um, FRAC Action, F-R-A-C-A-C-T-I-O-N. And just get educated, guys. It's, it's serious stuff. You guys enjoy this stuff as much as I do. This is something that I really, really enjoy. I put a lot of money into and I invest into, and for me to just get that taken away from me is complete and utter bullshit. But enough of that rant, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed whatever I was pointing out. And hopefully that didn't sway you from buying this gun again. I'm still learning as time progresses. Thank you guys so much for sticking around. I appreciate you all, love you all. Catch you in the next one.